Hi, this is Ned Siegfried from Siegfried & Jensen. As proud sponsors of BeliefCast, we hope you are inspired by Todd's weekly podcasts, which contain so many courageous stories of recovery and personal growth. Remember, it's not what happened in the past that matters, it's what happens in the future. We invite you all to work hard and be optimistic about your future. Enjoy today's podcast. We are back. This is Todd Sylvester with the Todd Inspires Belief Cast. Thank you for tuning in. As always, thank you for believing in me. It means the world to me. Um, I can't believe that we are ranked in the top 100 in mental health in the world. That just blows my mind. So, But it's not because of me. It's because of you guys and these amazing guests that I bring on. I got to uh, give a shout out to our sponsors, uh, Siegfried and Jensen, Wasatch Recovery, um, boy, yeah, Thread Wallets, just had a little blank there, and then the music you heard at the beginning, and then the music at the end is by my good friend Paul Cardall. He's an award-winning pianist all over the world. He's got 25 million active listeners, and I'm so grateful that he allows me to use one of his songs that is so beautiful. So thank you, Paul. And today we're joined by uh, just an amazing human being. Um, I get a little choked up thinking about this all of a sudden. But uh, also consider him a great friend uh, as well and just love what he's doing to make this world a better place, Jared Miller. Jared, thanks for being here today. Todd, thanks for having me on, buddy. Yeah. And don't start that or this will be a <laughs> this will be a sap through the whole entire thing. But no, I yeah. appreciate you having me on, buddy. Wow. It's my honor, man. He drove all the way up from St. George to be here today, and that means a lot to me that he would be willing to do that. Uh, next to him is his beautiful wife, Mandy. She's here for moral support. <laughs> we might put the mic in front of her going, hey, was that true what he just said there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she'd be a good fact checker. But yeah, they're be. recently married and they're a beautiful couple and just glad to have her here as well. Um, Jared is a certified advanced substance abuse, s- substance use disorder counselor. That's a tongue twister for it's some mouthful, reason. mouthful, right? I'm yeah. a fellow traveler. Yeah. You know, he works at a treatment center, one of the biggest in the Utah, if not the country. Uh, he also hosts his own podcast that I've been fortunate to be on, titled We Do Recovered with Jared Miller. Um, again, like I said, he's married. He's been through a lot in his life, and you you guys might be a little surprised when you hear everything that he's been through. It's it's one of those where you go, man, how does someone endure all that and get through this and then get to a point where you're at today? So we're going to hear this beautiful story today. So why don't we start off, though, Jared? Tell us where you grew up. And tell us a little bit about your childhood and maybe a little bit about your family. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Before we get rock and roll, and if you wouldn't mind, I I, want to kind of preface this. Um, I have been through a lot. You know, uh, I I, sometimes when I hear (laughs) when I hear my own story, right, it's (laughs) um, I don't want to any cue the music, any sad stuff. I'm grateful today for everything that. Yeah. That I've been through, and I think when people come on here, the reason why you're probably one of the top 100 mental health podcasts is there's a certain level of vulnerability to come on and share yeah. some of the most deepest, intimate times of your life. Yeah. So the preference, the preface is this: before we get started, my story is not real cute. It's a real ugly story. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes, if you're listening to this, I I may sound like a martyr because there are times that I'm the villain and the hero. Yeah. And, uh, a lot of everything I go through just before we even get into it was a hundred percent. I take accountability for it was my fault. So let's just start that right up front. The second thing, the intention behind why I do this, Mm -hmm. because it hasn't always been like an unselfish thing. There was a certain time where I felt very much like, like you've heard the saying, just do the next right thing. Yeah. I felt like I was doing the next right thing, but not always for the right reason. And so yeah. okay. today I, I just want to, my intention it. is this, not to, not to really glorify or war story my past. Yeah. It's a hundred percent because man, now I'm going to get emotional. I had a cousin, um, who at one stage in, in my life when I felt like there was no hope, took me to this religious center, this church. And I, I heard a man stand up in front of a whole crowd of people and share something that I was too embarrassed and shamed 
to ever be able to talk about in front of a room full of people. And I thought to myself, this dude's crazy, right? <laughs> like, does he realize he has to like live in this community that he's talking about? <laughs> he did these things, but that just goes to show how sick and how isolated and how sad and how ashamed I was at the time. That man I'm talking about is your host, Todd Sylvester. Oh, wow. So <laughs> the intention today is yeah. this. Please share this because whether you realize it or not, there's somebody out there that I hope and I share today that it reaches and it helps. Yeah. Like I, my story is one of many. It doesn't make me special. Mm -hmm. My hope is that I can reach somebody else to help walk them out of the dark and into the light. Yeah. So love that. Had a great childhood. Is that? Yeah. And before, I went on a soapbox already, no, no, no. Todd. I apologize. Yeah. No, you're good. <laughs> and, and I got to tell you something, and this was amazing. Uh, and we're going to cry here for a minute. Yeah. Thank you, first of all, for saying that. And I had no idea at the, at the time the impact that would have had on your life. Um, that cousin you're talking about saw me the other day. Mark Miller. Mark Miller. Yeah. Two, uh, like a, probably about two weeks ago, I go to a restaurant with my wife. And we're standing in line waiting to think about what we're going to order. And he, up comes, here comes Mark Miller. Yeah. Gives me this gigantic hug. And then he th puts something in my hand. And I'm like, what's this? And I look in there and it's like, it's $100 and 20s. Yeah. I go, no, no, what, what's this? He goes, no, dude, you, you've helped my family more than you know. But, you know, just something like to that. Effect. I'm like, no, yeah. I'm not, I don't need. He goes, no, dinner's on me. I go, I don't need $100 worth of hamburgers right now. <laughs> And, and I was trying to give it back. He's like, no. He goes, if I had more money, I would give it all to you right now. And it, yeah. this was two weeks ago. That's crazy. And I'm like, dude, you're amazing. Is Thank you. Odd? You didn't need to do that. But it's, it's just funny how when you the, the ripple effect you can have on people yeah. by sharing. Yeah. And, and, and guys, when I say Jared, when he's come from the darkness to the light, it's truly... You know, one of my favorite statements I will share with my clients, the greater the darkness, the greater the light, or the greater the sinner, the greater the saint. Yeah. And I seen that in you. And just that transformation, it's been, you know, inspiring to me to see what you're doing and the confidence you have and that you do share and the vulnerability that you present. And so I agree with you. You're not special and no one's special or we're all special. We're all the same. I like that too. Everyone has... Everyone has something that they're dealt, they're dealing with on some level. Yeah, and um, and I think that that's that's one hundred percent it, right? Is my there's many people that have a similar story to yep. me, uh -huh. but they're so ashamed of it. Yeah, that that they've got it clear back in their subconscious, and it's it's yeah. maybe causing some anxiety. It's causing some yeah. depression. What you're going to hear today is I used to do I used to do drugs, and now I don't. That's the low hanging fruit of my story, Todd. <laughs> yeah. The more important, yeah. the more deep part of my story was I didn't know how to manage my mental health. Mm -hmm. It led to some very difficult times. Mm -hmm. It led to the point where I didn't want to be alive anymore. And I had to learn how to take off the Teflon mask. I had to learn what it meant to be courageous, what it really meant. Like not just tough guy, prison mentality, you know, I'll fight you on the schoolyard type stuff. Right, yeah. Um, so that's the, that's beyond the, the low hanging fruit of, I used to do drugs and now I don't. Well, why don't we just get right to it? Let's then. do it. Let's yeah. get right to it. You had some things hit you all at once. It seemed like yeah. some death, a divorce. Let's just go get, get right to that point where things, you thought things were going well. And then all of a sudden life throws these things at you and you didn't know at that time, at least how to handle that in a healthy way. Yeah, absolutely. I'll fast forward to the beginning. Had a great childhood. Mom, dad, both in the picture, biological parents. Grew up out in the country, country kid. Loved chasing chickens <laughs> yeah. and shooting BB guns and all the stuff, right? Played sports growing up. I mean, I had zero complaints there. Had a, had a great childhood. Um, yeah, my where things kind of got really tough for me was college athlete. Had some sports injuries. Shattered my ankle twice. Mm. Had to have a shoulder surgery. Through all that, I had passion, I had purpose, I had community in my life, friendships, wasn't a problem. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I come from a family where you repurpose things and use them, right? Yeah. You, you don't waste anything. <laughs> right. So I would take uh, my prescription of pain medications and put them in a shoebox in the top of the closet. So mm -hmm. boom, let's plant that seed for a second, come back to it. 
So went through, you know, um, high school sports stuff, college athlete. My dad uh, is a vet, was a vet. He's passed. Yeah. And he got Agent Orange in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. Fought with 101st Airborne, um, Army Ranger, just a stud of a guy. Yeah. Well, he it, it took a toll on him. And in my early 20s, um, I always felt like I've always felt kind of rushed because I knew I was told back in high school, like, you know, he doesn't have a lot of time to live. Yeah. And man, my dad was tougher than else. I'd been hearing that for years, right? Yeah, it's like, right. not like when you first hear it, it shocks you. But yeah. then when, you know, like every year he's going back in and making a joke with the doctor, like how much longer I got now, doc, you know, like <laughs> it just became a joke at yeah, some point right. <laughs> uh, until it, until it wasn't. So uh, I got a phone call. I was teaching and coaching out in Arizona. Um, I was a high school gym teacher and health teacher coach football and baseball and I get a call from my mom and the first thing I remember like it was yesterday she just said are you sitting down which I thought was a really weird question yeah and and I said yeah you know I'm just driving uh to work um and she said hey your dad's passed mm. and I remember in that moment I was like it was it was tough for me um man now I'm skipping around because the reason it was tough for me is that was my first year as a head football coach. And before I knew okay. he wasn't doing real well, but again, like I'd been hearing that for years. Right. Yeah. So man, it's almost like you didn't think it was going to happen. Yeah. Just, In the back yeah. of my mind I did, but yeah. I, I guess I didn't realize like, so anyways, I, I fly home after my first year as a head coach. I know the football season's coming up. My mom's telling me he's not doing real good. You know, a nurse comes in hospice, right? Mm -hmm. So it's getting bad. And I take him and I do all the stuff that he took me to do as a kid, right? The Ogden oh, Raptors awesome. yeah. baseball game <laughs> and our favorite camping site and go to the movies. And and I was supposed to fly out on a Sunday night. And Sunday I'm, you know, helping getting him dressed and ready. And he turns to me and he says, Jared, just stay. Hmm. I don't know why I get emotional at this part because I could like see his face. Yeah. He says, just stay. Just stay for a couple more days. I said, Dad, I can't. You know, two days start tomorrow, and this is my first big boy job. You know, I'm yeah, a head right. football coach. Yeah. And uh, he, he kind of nodded, and he understood. And so I flew home that Sunday night, and it was Monday or Tuesday morning I got that phone call from my mom. Mm. And I think that, right, because it wasn't yeah. an unexpected death. Right. But in that moment, I kind of realized, like, I don't know, maybe in some way he, he knew that it was super close and he wanted me there when he died and I wasn't there. So that's where kind of the internal conflict came. Sort of kicking yourself probably like, why didn't I just stay? Absolutely. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. And, um, you know, at the time I had literally, I'm not joking, Todd, I probably had six different, very powerful, dilated, hydromorphine, you know, Percocet, mm -hmm. strong painkiller killers in the top of my closet and I remember thinking um man if this was good for physical pain you know at night when I can't sleep because I'm sitting here running yeah. all these thoughts running through my head it, at least it would give me some relief and help me sleep yeah quiet the noise so I'd take a couple you know and before I knew it you know I blew through those prescriptions and you know my it's funny, but not funny. My my short baseman and cornerback's dad is a local prescriber in a small town in Arizona I was living in. And, wow. and not trying to get him in trouble or whatever, but, right. you know, I'd go in and we'd chop it up about baseball during baseball season yeah. and football during football season, and he'd write the prescription, and it was too easy. It was too easy. And by that point in time, I was taking the, the painkillers to numb the emotional pain. Um. So that was the where it all really got started. Right. And I never truly got off of pain meds in one way or, or another, whether it was through valid prescriptions or through buying them off of people yeah. for the next several years. Did you ever share with anyone at that time how you were feeling? Like, man, I should have stayed. Did you, you sure, did you share that with any family member? Like, man, I feel horrible right now because he told me to stay. Did you ever share that experience? With no, because that wasn't the way I was raised. Yeah. I was raised, you know. Yeah. And no knocks on my dad. My dad, you know, but he was a he was a military. He was a he was a very 
you just yeah. didn't talk about that kind of stuff, yeah. right? It was rub some dirt in Dust it and get off. back out yeah, there, exactly. and, you know, and, and you know, men don't cry type mm -hmm. mentality. And, okay. and so, no, I didn't. And I was just back curious. to the yeah. intention, right. Of yeah. the listener, if you're going through something, if something's eating you alive, it's going to come out in one way or another. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. today, both of us work in the field of mental health and yeah. substance abuse treatment. And it doesn't have to get to the point that we've been. Yeah. It, honestly, even just going in and talking to somebody, getting it off your chest. I think that when you let it ruminate in your head, it, it, it just grows and yeah. becomes cancerous. So within the time span of a couple of years, you know, my dad passed away. My brother also was struggling with some alcohol stuff, going through his own grief and he ended up, um, passing away from accidental overdose. Uh, I, I, I don't want to get too deep into my brother's stuff cause his, sure. it's his stuff and my family's asked me to, to not really get into yeah, the weeds of that. Fine. Sure. Um, and my wife at the time I was married and had a couple kids. She, uh, she knew something was going on and because I, you know, I couldn't be honest with myself, let alone anybody else around me. Right. Yeah. Um, and of course, wanting to be the tough guy, college football player, you know, I, I didn't want to look weak in anybody's eyes. And yeah. so I wasn't going to, you know, reach out for help or anything. And so ultimately it led to a separating and divorce and man, moved back in with my mom. My mom found out that I had, I don't know if you know this, but heroin, see, this is where it starts to get ugly just mm -hmm. for the listener, right? Uh, yeah. it's not a pretty story. Uh, the natural progression with opiates is typically heroin. Yep. It's a lot cheaper. My mom found out I was using that, kicked me out of the house um, when we were in our separated phase, when we were going through our divorce. So I ended up homeless um, downtown Salt Lake City, Utah, right there by Rio Grande, Tent City. Yeah. Wow. And not for just like, you know, living in and out of a car, not for like days or weeks, months, months. Um, yeah. Looking back eight, almost nine years ago, I've heard stories of family members that would drive down and like look for me and just watch me from afar. There was one point in time where my sister actually came up when I was in the process of being searched by police officers and begged for me to come home. And by that time, I, I had formed resentments because I felt like everybody had abandoned me. Yeah. And yeah, so why isn't I, someone coming down here to rescue me and get me out of here and that kind of thing? But the sad thing is, is even like when my sister did, yeah. I, I refused to leave. You I said, no. I'll tell you what, give me, give me 20 bucks. I'll be on the front runner. Pick me up in Davis County. And guess what I use the 20 bucks for? Yeah. I'm sure you oh, wouldn't yeah. need three guesses. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, again, that resentment was keeping you from not taking the help. Correct. Right. Yeah. I always say this to my clients. Resentment breeds rebellion. You know, when we resent anyone or anything, even if your resentments are just, if you think you've got good reasons, you're, we usually typically go rebel and we blow up our lives trying to stick it back to them. Oh, yeah. Like, like oh, yeah, give me 20 bucks. Yeah, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and then I'll you, show you. Let me hurt yeah, me. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So that, yeah, that's kind of July 3rd, uh, 2014. Um, I, I decided that. I'd had enough and uh, attempted suicide through an overdose. And mm. that's where one life ended and another one began. I say that because I yeah. literally had like a near death experience that changed me and not like in the split of a moment. Right. But I felt like has put me on a, the path that I'm on today. Um, can, can you share some of that or is that too personal? about the near-death experience because I'm fascinated by it. I've had several people on my podcast talking for that whole reason. Is that something you feel comfortable sharing or? Yes. Is it, okay. <laughs> Let me preface real quick okay. though, okay? Because okay. here's here's what a lot of people hear okay. now. Okay, all right. They think I'm either full of it or none of it makes sense because yeah. it's really hard. Sure. Like describe a feeling. Yeah, right. Ask somebody to describe a feeling. Like it's yeah. really tough to describe <laughs> a feeling or an experience. Yeah. Oh, no, when I it, get it. When like it doesn't... in in the logical mindset that we're sitting in and the listeners listening to, it's not going to make a lot of sense, but I'll do my best. Okay. Thank you. Cause I think this is important. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
so it was in a public bathroom in um, the Gateway Mall. And I don't even, it doesn't matter how much or whatever. Mm -hmm. Basically, I I attempted, you can fill in the blanks. I attempted suicide through an overdose. Um, Everything went dark. I can remember having regret the second I pushed the plunger in all the way. Really? Yeah. I remember thinking, oh my God, what did I just do? And then I remember it getting very dark. And I can remember it started towards, again, I couldn't see my feet, but it started underneath me and and darkness just started to kind of consume me or come around me. The only thing I can really relate it to is like if you've seen the Matrix where he touches the glass and he pulls his hand back. Yeah, and it's... But it started underneath me and it kind of surrounded me and slowly started moving in on me. And it was just darkness and it... I can remember feeling cold, very alone. And right before it totally consumed me. And again, I wasn't like in my body, but it was almost Mm -hmm. like right before this isn't gonna make sense, but right before it put me out, right before, before my energy was gone, right. Is the best way I can describe it. Like a lightning bolt, there was something pulled me out. Boom. Like, like a real fast light. Wow. Um, it, it started real tiny and then it had me and pulled me in quicker than, than I can comprehend or really describe. Yeah. But I was no longer there. I was no longer in the darkness that was slowly closing in around mm-hmm. me. I was, the best way to describe it is on a beach, which it wasn't a beach, but it was the feeling of peace, yeah. of love, of acceptance, of happiness. And the again, I it was like I couldn't go out into the water. And it, again, it wasn't water, but this is the best way I can describe it. Right. I couldn't go out into the beautiful horizon that I saw. Um, I had to stand on the beach. And I wasn't standing, so that's a poor word, but my energy was in that mm-hmm. that environment. And out of this beautiful, my dad came. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. And we didn't talk like me and you are, are talking, but he was there with me. And I remember communicating to him I want to stay. I don't want to go back. Yeah. Um, I miss you. You left me behind. And I can remember, um, again, he, it wasn't, it was him, but it was like, his energy was with me. And I remember him communicating back to me. It's not your time. You st- like there's still more to be done. Wow. And I can remember um, communicating back to him. I love you. Be with me. I've only ever shared this one time. And it was at an event that I spoke at out in uh, Indiana. Um, yeah. So that's, and I've been talking for years and, and that's yeah. near and dear to my heart. And, um, so the next thing I know, I, uh, that environment I was in was now a fluorescent light that I was staring into and there was commotion and chaos around me. And I remember hearing he's back. And I remember thinking, mm-hmm. oh, oh no, no, I don't want to be back. So and the reality knowing that, oh, I'm here again. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And, and it, it, there was EMTs around me. There was police officers around me. There was security around me, you know, yeah. um, all security. Yeah. And I can remember I was, I started to fight 
Like I was, I thought mm. that I could get back to where I was oh, okay. if like I fought yeah. my way away from it. Right. And then there was a period of time where like I realized this, the gravity or, or the situation I was in. And so then I was just fighting to get away. Mm -hmm. Um, so, because I realized, you know, I, I was felony on felony probation on the run from Davis County, uh, tons of legal issues, you know, the things that had led to the attempt. And, um, that's where my story of recovery started. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. I know that's not the easiest thing to do. And, um, but I, I, I love hearing those kind of stories because everyone says the same thing. They've done studies on this all over the world now. And I've had so many people on cause I'm really fascinated by it. And just that feeling of just love and peace. Yeah. And the, I don't know the percentage, but there's a certain percentage where they actually, they're told you can't come <laughs> you got to go back <laughs> and there's a certain percentage that have to go through that and, and they all yeah. say kind of what you said well i don't want to go back right <laughs> you know? right so wow thanks for sharing that though that's i yeah. know it's a very sacred thing and uh and i hope it I, yeah i realize that it's especially when i get emotional and i you know yeah. i'm a ball and baby through it uh <laughs> it's really hard to under, understand yeah. and it's hard to sure. comprehend sure but it's the it's the best that i can do to to describe that event. Yeah. So that's when you said life begins again for you, a new life, so to speak, recovery. And I mean, mm. you're doing so, so many amazing things right now, man. It's so cool. Mm. So talk about that. Like what, what was the shift after that? And, and I, I know there's a lot of moving parts there. Yeah. You know, you're still dealing with divorce and, and oh, yeah. you know, losing loved ones and all that stuff. I mean, that's still real. So how, what, what happens and how did you do this? I remember, so when you're withdrawing off of opiates, you typically don't sleep, right? Yeah. You're miserable. <laughs> right. You got the, the machine gun jerks and you're like, mm -hmm. I tell people you won't die. The two, the two substances that will kill you when you're withdrawing is alcohol and benzodiazepines, right. but you'll wish you were dead when you're withdrawing from opiates. It's rough. It's not pretty. It's pretty ugly. <laughs> yeah. And I was kicking on a concrete floor in a jail cell in um, Salt Lake County because I was arrested mm -hmm. in Salt Lake County and then I was on... Um, felony probation in Davis County. So they shipped me back up to Davis County. Anyways, Salt Lake County, I was in a cell by myself cause I was puking and crapping my pants and just it, anyways, it, like I said, it's ugly. Um, <laughs> nobody wanted to be in a cell with me. Yeah. And so at night three, I said a prayer and it was an honest, uh, ugly, angry prayer. And, yeah. it, and it, yeah. it, it essentially was like, God, if, if you know, if it's not, if I can't come back, if I can't come home, give me a purpose. Like, like give me something to live for. Mm. Um, wow. and I wish I said that like all of a sudden I heard trumpets from heaven and you know, like the fire brigade <laughs> came in and we all celebrated and, right. but it wasn't like that. It right. was, it, I slept that night. If anything, I, I prayed, you know, give yeah. me something to live for. Give me some peace. Give me some comfort. And, and that was the first night that I could actually get a full night's sleep, which yeah. was fantastic. Yeah, that, that goes a long way. <laughs> yeah. Here I am, though, still, you know, yeah. in a jail cell. And so to, basically to kind of fast forward, because I do want to spend time in recovering what I'm doing today. Um, I did my time in jail, did a treatment program, Davis Behavioral Health, did a men's recovery center. Uh, did the whole, th it's, it's funny. The last time we were just up here in, uh, December or I say up here up North, I was in Davis County and my, I got my, my wife, Mandy sit next to me. And as we're driving, uh, through Davis County, I pointed out like that was the halfway house I stayed in and I didn't even have a car. And so I would take the bus from here <laughs> to where I worked yeah. in the mall and uh -huh. I would work out at this place. And, and I, man, I would, I would literally lay in my bunk at night and I'd put headphones on. And I shared this with her and, and I would imagine, um, man, I don't know why I'm so emotional today. I would imagine the life I have now. And I just mm. thought like, I don't know how I'm going to do it, Yeah. but man, it, like it would be so cool to, to have this and this and, yeah. and, um, wow. so it, th through an eight year process today, I'm kind of. I've manifested the life that, that I'm living today. And uh, 
Yeah, it was one of the things that was the key to my recovery is I remember going in the day I found out that I was going to be done with treatment. I went into the clinical director. His name was Derek. We called him the Iceman because, dude, this guy pulled no punches. He was meaner than mean, yeah. right? He was drill sergeant. <laughs> and I said, Derek, dude, I'm scared for my life. Like, I don't want to go, but I don't want to relapse. I, I don't want to mm-hmm. go back to the life I was living. Yeah. It was like some PTSD stuff. Like, you think people would be celebrating, like, woohoo, I'm getting out and I'm free yeah. and you're I'm like, off paper. And like, I'm, and I was scared. Yeah. I was, I was scared. And I said, how? Like, how do I do this? How do I continue this? And he said, stick to your habits, stick to your routine, get a sponsor, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Go to the meetings, get a community of people. And I did those things. And, and honestly, I can say whether, whatever your flavor is yeah. to the person listening t- today, if sure. you're trying to do this by yourself, you will fail. Yeah. You need somebody else because you can't trust your own thoughts when right. you're in early recovery. Right. So for an entire year, another man, I would have to run things past this <laughs> other dude. And I can remember when he right. first told me that he said, for the next year, you're not allowed to make a single decision by yourself. And I'm like, oh yeah, okay. You know? And then he's like, no, I'm serious. Yeah. I call him like later the week to check in for the week. And he's like, Hey, you know, where'd you go to lunch today? And I was like, ah, oh, Del Taco, you know what? He said, oh, who told you to go to Del Taco? Oh, nobody did. John, I just decided to go. Oh, so you don't, you don't need my help. You don't, you, you're going to work your own program. You don't need my advice. Mm. And holy cow, that was like, put you on blast. Yeah. That was, well, he, he (laughs) kind of started calling me out on my own stuff, you know, like, in other words, if, if, if you want my help, follow through with the things that, that I have to say. And today to this day, I've taken a little bit of the ice man and a little bit of John. And (laughs) that's why I'm the counselor I am today. Right. As I've incorporated these these life lessons I've learned from, (laughs) from these people that have been influential and taught me how to live again. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I love that you said you sat there and imagine imagined the life that you have now. You would mm-hmm. sit and imagine it. You manifested it, and I believe I believe in manifest manifestation and that we're creators. And you said something early on at the very beginning of this podcast. You're like, I just want you to know everything I've done is my fault. Mm-hmm. Like that accountability piece is huge, and that's also a way. I always say this: if you take accountability, suffering stops. It really does. If we keep blaming, and that's when your life really changed. You stopped blaming, took accountability, and you. So that's a form of creation, right? Absolutely. And yeah. I just I loved what you said there. And if anyone listening to this right now, if you think you can't imagine and then go make it happen, think again. I mean, you're a perfect example, Jared. That look where you were. But I think that imagination piece is actually what led you to all that. And I appreciate that. I, I look at my recovery. I look at the last eight, nine years, and I, I feel like it's kind of like an onion. You know, there's yeah. been, th- honestly, my higher power, call it God, call it the universe, call it the cosmos, what, whatever flavor fits you, yeah. ha- has put people in my path at certain periods of time. Yeah, I think of it as like a car, right? And I can mm-hmm. make it in first gear for so long. Yeah. That was John my first year, my sponsor. Yeah, right, yeah. Right, and mm. then... And then like yeah. it, at certain points, God introduces other people in my life and I switch mm. gears. Right. And yeah. I kind of change, not that my foundation is the same, but he puts people in my path that help me. When I met you, I had like 18 months, two years. Yeah. I, I had some clean time. Yeah. You were doing good there. Well, not in, white in knuckling it. Yeah. I was old. abstinent. <laughs> holding on for dear life. <laughs> I was, you can remember that. Oh, yeah, right? I, I remember I was holding on for dear life and I, but I was, I was, I was, I was still pretty sick. I was yeah. my mental health. Yeah. You're again, still struggling again. Yeah. You're going to hear, I used to do drugs. Now I don't, but it's deeper than that. Like yeah. the next gear for me was okay. I, I can, I can live life without substances. How do I get rid of the shame? Yeah. How do I get rid of the guilt, the embarrassment, the, the feeling like, um, I have to hide a certain portion of my, self and the mistakes that I've made from everybody else. Mm -hmm. In other words, I didn't feel like I could be transparent and get up in the front in front of hundreds of people like you did and and tell my story. Like Mm -hmm. I I wasn't in that space. Right. If that makes sense. Yeah. And I think that that's important because I I hope that there's some people out there that are listening to this, that are maybe in early recovery that are going, man, like, 
when I came and I, and I talked to you, yeah, I came, I heard you speak. I had an in with, with my cousin, Mark, <laughs> he scheduled us. You were super kind. I mean, I came to your house. You didn't yeah. know me from Adam. I could have had a gun or something, Todd. Like, no. Uh, yeah, you could have, <laughs> you could have, but man, you had a good vibe about you, man. I appreciate that. Absolutely. You know, and, and <laughs> some of the stuff that you shared, you know, the, the, like, I'm not broken. Yeah. I think that I, yeah. I, at the point that I met you, I was content being a truck driver who w secretly went to fellowship meetings underground, was <laughs> paranoid going in and out of them because I didn't want anybody else in the community yeah. to see that I was yeah. an addict. Right. Yeah. And, um, having another person look you in the face and say, you're not broken. Yeah. Look you in the face and say, well, it sounds to me like you don't believe that you deserve nice things. I mean, that for me was like a paradigm shift. Yeah. I, I had already condemned myself to this Yeah. and not to knock truck drivers. If that's your passion, that's fantastic. It just wasn't mine. Yeah. You know? And I was always, when I would meet new people, it wasn't like, I would show them a portion that I was comfortable for them to see. Yeah. And then in the back of my mind, it was like, Oh, they're nice to me until they found, until they find until out they that I'm this. a yeah. recovering heroin addict who was a homeless junkie at one point in my life. And then how are they going to treat me? Yep. Yeah. And, and all that paranoia and all that like anxiety and all that depression of it's only a matter of time until people see who, again, before I met you, who identified as the real me, Right. Because yeah. I was still sick. I was still yeah. holding on to. Yeah. So, so that was kind of another gear. You were like my third or fourth gear there, Todd. <laughs> hey, well, I, that's amazing to hear that. Honestly, you know, you, you hope you have impact when you share with people. I say this a lot. We're all, we're all standing on shoulders of giants. You know, I'm standing on a bunch of shoulders of giants and that's why I'm here with you today. And, you know, maybe you stood on my shoulders for a minute you know, now you got so many people standing on your shoulders because you're now this giant. Not that we don't have stuff to work on because we both do. But at the same time, we've dedicated our lives now to doing something to help someone else. Yeah. There's no greater high in the world than that. Talk about that because you're, you know, you're an educational speaker. You've got a supplement line now that are helping people. You, you speak all over the place. You got the podcast. You, I mean, you're here today even, and you, you really are a, a, a pillar in the community, especially in the recovery community. And I mean, it's just really is remarkable, dude. I appreciate that. <laughs> it's remarkable. I appreciate that. I, th I, none of that would have been possible if I hadn't have met you and seen, and honestly, like I, you know, I'm not trying to like ride your coattails here, <laughs> but, but it w it showed me that you can be authentic mm -hmm. and you can fully show everybody. Yeah. Your who you who you are, what you've been through, and instead of letting it define you, you've let yeah. it refine you. Ooh, I love that. You know, yeah. and I'm sure somebody quoted that somewhere. Do I need an <laughs> APA cited format, babe? Um <laughs> But but honestly, like so from that point on, I, I met you. I, I decided, you know what, I do deserve happiness. I quit the trucking thing. I had a lot of money saved up because I was working in the oil fields, which paid pretty nice. Yeah, oh yeah. And I decided I just I'm gonna just pursue happiness because I do deserve nice things. Yeah. I need to challenge that belief. I moved to St. George. I rented a room from a, a guy named Jared Sellers, who ends up being um, Terry Sellers' little brother. Yeah. If you don't know the name Terry Sellers, he he's an addictionologist. He yeah. works, he has a recovery story of his own. Yeah. That's my dude. That's, that's like my mentor. <laughs> I'm very close to him now. Yeah. Um, my therapist today, cause I still see a therapist, you know, I, I, again, we all have stuff we're working on. Yep. We all do. Don't we? <laughs> she tells me that I look for, um, surrogate brothers in my life and I look for surrogate father figures yeah. in my life. Yeah. And, and you would be like a surrogate brother to me, you know, and Terry's like a surrogate father figure you to me. You just made my day. I, you you could have said father because I'm a little older than you. <laughs> no, so, dude. So thank you, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, I do, I get to do some cool stuff today. Um, yeah. And I've had to really, like I said at the beginning of this, I've had to challenge that because I have good people in my life that can look me in the face and say, are you, you're doing the right thing, but is it for the right reason? Is this, is this because you're still in the self-obsession of Jared? Or is this because you genuinely want to educate these yeah, younger right. generation of kids? Is it because 
you want to be Mr. Popular and have, you know, 30,000 downloads an episode, or is it because you want to spread a message of hope? Yeah. And I think the more that I can stay grounded in, I'm, I, my story is not unique. The difference is, is I've been able to learn from people like you, Todd, that yeah. I can share my story yeah. and move past the personal paranoia in the hopes that somebody is out there. Another Jared is out there yeah, in, in the absolutely. darkness, yeah. afraid to talk, afraid to live an authentic self. And I can reach them and they can hear my story and go, if some dude who's been homeless, a heroin addict, right, thought that he had, thought that being a truck driver working in the oil field was the bee's knees <laughs> and he's been able to, to get remarried, own a house and... St. George, Utah, which is the new California, apparently, if you're unfamiliar, <laughs> right. work as, did you know Doppel gave me a license? You want to talk about crazy? I'm like a five-time felon back in the day. I mean, I've had to yeah, right. get him reduced and expunged sure. and all that, but, but still. Today I have a, a license, like the state of Utah, how, that's mind-blowing, man. <laughs> so hopefully people out there, listen, if if you have yeah. if you have some hurts, habits, or hangups that yeah. you're still kicking yourself in the butt about, man, you woke up today. Today is April 14th, yeah. 2023. Stop living in the past. Go after your dream. It reminds me of a beautiful quote by Alan Watts. Uh, he's a he, he's passed now, but he was a British philosopher and amazing. And here's, here's how he says this. When you're ready to wake up, you're going to wake up. If you're not ready to wake up, you're going to stay pretending you're just a poor little me. Mm. Yeah. I love Boom. that. Boom. Yeah, and that's really what you're saying. And then the other thing that really is touching me is seeing seeing the greatness here. Oh, thanks. I know man. You, you. I know you hate me saying this, but I'll, I'll say this to my clients all the time: Ad- addiction and adversity is the wake up call to your greatness. Because someone once taught that to me, and when I first heard that, I'm like, oh yeah, whatever, that's cute, right? <laughs> but man, when I I when I really started to buy into that, I could actually be great, not in the sense of great in the eyes of other people, great in my own mindset. Meaning loving who I am and authentically sharing who I am and doing it for the right reasons, you know. Yeah. And I see this in you, dude. I, you are the example of someone who is has been woken up by his addiction to his greatness. Thank you. Right. I mean, just I mean, right, Mandy. I mean, come on. She's Thank nodding. You. She's nodding. Yes. <laughs> you know what is crazy? If I could, you know, if, if I can loop Mandy in on this, sure. some of the, some of the stuff that the stories I told myself about yeah. being a person uh-huh. in recovery and all the shame and all the guilt was, yeah. even if I meet an amazing woman who I can, you know, get her to fall in love with me, what's her family going to think? Yeah. I'm very public about my recovery. Oh, for sure. <laughs> and like, what is, like, you You're know, You're dating like, who? <laughs> exactly. And like, you know, so here, here's, here's kind of the message, uh, I think, to the listener who, who's out there. I feel like we're in a time where people are starting to have these conversations. More Todd Sylvester's are speaking out and giving other, yeah. giving other people like Jared Miller's permission to share and yeah. be authentic. Yeah. And the tough thing is, is, If you take a, here's why I think that I'm decent at what I do today. I can take a look at somebody who most people look at and go, oh, that's a crackhead or a heroin mm-hmm. addict or mm-hmm. a, a drunk, you know, an alcohol, whatever. Yeah. And I can empathize with that person and I can see the person that's really inside of them that a lot of people, in other words, people dismiss them. I become curious. Why? Yeah. What What's hurting them inside? What are they running away from? What are they numbing out? What is it that... And you can't teach that. Right. No school can teach somebody to care. Yeah. No school can teach somebody to, to find that empathy, to be able to sort through the behaviors and sort through all of the the chaos and the confusion. I mean, you work in a residential setting. It's mm-hmm. chaos and... Conf- you know, oh, it yeah. can be crazy sometimes, yeah, right? right? Like... Yeah. Um getting back to there was a certain point where Mandy's dad, it was too funny. He said he, he came to our house and he said, Jared. Now he, listen, he's an old fashioned traditional guy. He said, Jared, <laughs> right? He said, Jared, I want you to know we watched the, the series dope sick on Hulu. 
and I get it now. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, yeah. thank you. Like that. Yeah. Right. I think we're in a, a really cool time where people are like starting to realize that it's not just a moral defect. Right. You know? Well, and, and, and an enemy is just a person's story you do not know. Right. And, and so once they know your story and they see you and what you've been through, that's like, and they learn and they watch things and learn from it and go, oh, see, you're, you're not an enemy. I get right. you now. Yeah. I know your story. And that's why when I saw you, even when you were still struggling, I saw, I saw your greatness. I saw right through all of that. I'm like, dude, you're amazing. Like truly amazing. You just don't know it yet. And Thank once you. you start tapping into the truth, that's when your life's going to take off and go wherever it needs to go. And it's, man, it's going big. And Thank yes, you. he's got this beautiful wife now who's, I guess, parents have uh, accepted. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it only took it only took asking her dad like three times, uh, two times. She's saying two, he's saying three. Uh, it's somewhere, uh, Dave, we don't know. Dave, you think, uh, you know, how would you feel about me asking your, your daughter to marry marry me? Well, keep dating for a while and we'll talk about it later was yeah. his first, which that's fair. I mean, she's that's a great, yeah, she's a great woman. Totally fair. <laughs> wow. That is so cool. Um, God, there's so much I want to talk to you about. There's so many things we could you know, discuss. You know, you do a podcast uh, called, uh, we, we do recover with Jared Miller. Terry, uh, your mentor is a host on there with you. Yeah. Um, you've interviewed a lot of great people. What are some of the thing, highlights of that? Like, how do you, why do you love doing that so much? What we're doing right now? Yeah, I mean. Connecting. Yeah, isn't that cool? It, it really, it is. It's, it's cool because I get to, the one thing that I would say, I remember when I first was told, you know, go join a fellowship, get around other people. Yeah. I thought, man, those people are weird. That's not for me, <laughs> right? Like I. Yeah. Um, all the excuses, all the reasons <laughs> weirdos. And today I love my podcast because I get to meet different people who yeah. have been through similar things yeah. that they're, they're, they're like my tribe. Yeah. There's a certain piece. There's, there's life events that you've been through that I've also been through. And in some way it connects us Yeah. and to be able to, to meet different people, hear their story, you know, get to, be a fly on the wall of the amazing journey that they've been through. Yeah. That's super cool for me. Yeah. I agree with you. Like I'm the one who's being blessed here. I, our listeners are too, but I'm here face to face with Jared and we're connecting, we're crying together. We're laughing together. I mean, there, you're never more fully alive than when you're connected. Yeah. And I feel alive, man, when I did do this. So I, I, and I see you, you know, I see your posts and I've also been on your show you light up like a Christmas tree when that when they hit live. We're going, and you are just boom, larger than life. And I know you love it. That's you can feel that because you know you're helping people. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate that, and I would agree. And sometimes yeah. it's funny. We were listening to your episode on our way up here, <laughs> and um, sometimes I feel, I feel like I'm learning, man. I'm growing. Sure, you know when when I first yeah. started, I might have been a little cheesy, a little over the top. I uh, I'm still working through even nine years later. Uh -huh. I'll tell you, Todd, sometimes I feel like I'm, I'm mistaken because uh, I can listening to my older stuff and, and uh, mm -hmm. there's some attention seeking behaviors there that I don't like. Yeah. I still, one of my character defects that I struggle with today and I, and I really want it to be mindful of and aware of is, is ego you know, and yeah. what I've kind of come to realize is one of the hardest things back when I was homeless was because of my own fault, because I manipulated people, because I stole yeah. and told yeah. them whatever they wanted to hear. Yeah. Like nobody would even answer a phone call. I felt so alone. Yeah, man. And so today to be able to have people that are willing to come down, come on a podcast with me, you know, like that. I have to be mindful that I'm no longer that homeless Jared anymore. Yeah. You know, like right. I have, I have value today in keeping that kind of in check. So I think when people, you know, it, w whether it comes off cheesy or, or I'm <laughs> attention seeking or I'm larger than life, a lot of that man is, I just, I just need to know that people love me and people care. Yeah. And today, like when I call people I answer the phone, 
Yeah. Like that's, that's incredible. It sounds probably super dumb, but that's, that's incredible because yeah. <laughs> right. to me, like I can remember times when nobody wanted to take my phone call. Yeah. So, yeah, no, that's, that's, uh, I appreciate the honesty around yeah. all that, you know, and it's funny too. Cause you know, I, I don't know about you, but I'm winging this man. I, I, <laughs> I've been doing this podcast for six and a half years and I'm winging it. Like people go, how did, how did you get, I don't know. I'm winging it. I mean, you heard me. I screwed up in the whole intro. I mean, I'm, <laughs> no. I'm stumbling over my words. I don't care though. Cause I'm being real. I'm not going to go back and edit that. I said it wrong. Yeah. yeah this isn't a dateline. <laughs> no, There's no but million I, but I say things wrong it. all the time. And, and I think I just want people to know that. Yeah. I, just cause I'm doing this doesn't mean I know what I'm doing half the time. Cause I'm just winging it. But I think more importantly, I know that this is, I know your story, Jared, needs to be told and, and, and maybe on a much larger scale because there's so many people out there that need to hear it. And so that's what, I don't care that I screwed up. What, what the, 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 the gift of this is hearing what you're saying and, and coming from your heart. And it's amazing, dude. Thank you. It really, that's the beauty of this, you know? Yeah. Thank you. And you've got <laughs> 321 of them under your belt. Yeah, which is, and I've actually That's got more than that. Man. I've got like ten in the hopper that are done. It's like it's nuts. It, it blows my mind, and I, and it's almost like I've hit that tipping point, and it's almost like be careful what you imagine because you're gonna get it. Yeah, right. We're That's we're manifestors, cool. and but that's a good problem to have, and I, I can't complain about that. It's beautiful, yeah. but uh, um, if there's someone listening to you right now, who is in a dark place, they are thinking about ending their life, or they don't want to don't think they can overcome this or everyone, they feel abandoned, they're homeless or they have a, a friend who may be there. What would you tell that one person right now who is struggling in that dark place? Stop being so hard on yourself. I think that today I, when I do the YouTube uh, wormholes and you know, you got uh, a David Goggins book sitting over there and you know, there's the Eric Thomas is the, I don't call myself a motivational speaker because I feel like we're in a day in an age where it's like, you know, you just got to want it more. You just got to will it more. You just got to, mm -hmm. and it's man, find one thing today to be grateful for. Mm, I love that. Go outside, feel a leaf, man. Take off your shoes and walk in the grass. Like life is all around us. Yeah. Find, find one thing to be grateful for today. And I, for that person, I would say, reach out, you know, talk to somebody. Yeah. I, I think we're, man, as I sit back and every day I meet with clients and every day I do groups and if we could all just find a little bit more self-acceptance, mm -hmm. a little bit more love for ourselves, mm -hmm. a little bit more patience with ourselves that would be my message to that person is dude, there's life all around you. Like, don't be so hard on yourself. Stop beating that. yourself up. Mm. Go outside and, and see the world around you and, and take it in. Find one person that you can call, you can talk to. I think too, the, the other part of that is hopefully the people that are listening to this are family members of that person struggling. Yeah. And the message I would have for them is Your loved one is, I promise you, harder on themselves than you could ever be on them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I have a brother that, that to this day, like we have, I'm, I'm up here going to his son's wedding. We didn't talk for years, Todd. And I'm not talking just like one or two. I'm talking, we didn't speak for years. Wow. And finally, when we did talk, you know, the message he had for me was like, dude, it was breaking my heart. Yeah. I couldn't watch you self-destruct. Mm. It wasn't because he hated me. It wasn't because he, yeah. it, you know, all it's that was painful, my inner yeah. dialogue. Right. Yeah. And so for, I think a message for somebody who's listening to this, whose loved one is struggling is man, go up and give him a hug. Tell him you love him. You know, sometimes I think we, we confuse recreational use for, dependency yeah somebody who's out there you know you see the movies and somebody who's out there partying and having a good time and i don't know about your addiction but towards the end of mine it was it was not but at that point it had i had already burned too many bridges yeah it was already too late 
Yeah. Does that make sense? Sure. So for the person struggling, man, let go, forgive yourself, find something to be grateful for. For the yeah. person whose loved one is struggling, reach out to them. They're hurting. I promise you there's a reason why they're, they're using a chemical to, to alter their state of mind. For sure. Beautifully yeah. said. Seriously. I hope, that, hope that helps. No, it definitely does. You know, if, if our, if our listeners want to reach out to you, Jared, and, and follow your podcast and, you know, check out your supplement line and, and maybe even hire you to come speak to their group or things like that. What's the best way for them to do that? I would say reach out through my podcast page. Okay. Again, we do recover, uh, with Jared Miller. It's, if you're familiar with NA, it's my favorite piece of literature, any literature, if that helps you remember, we do recover. Uh, Jared Miller, just because that there's a bunch of different pages out there. Yeah. Um, reach out, direct message me. Um, you can send me an email. It's that same. We do recover with Jared Miller at gmail dot com. Okay. Um, yeah, I do a lot of stuff, and like right now we got a couple events coming up where we're going to be doing some fundraising for some sober living houses. All right on. Uh, January. You you mind if I just no please? This is more important than my podcast or my supplement line plug Let's, for me. Yeah, please plug. I, I would love to to get some support in raising some money for uh, Talent in the Park, which is SJS, the Shannon J Scholarship Foundation, is doing Talent in the Park June 3rd. I don't know if you guys in recovery have heard of this guy named Kalichi or Joe Nestor, but those are the two headlining performers. Mm. The gates open at 11 o'clock. They perform at 7 and 8 o'clock, I believe. I'll be emceeing that event. And then nice. the very next night, and and so SJS raises money for people to go to Valley Camp oh, yeah. that don't have insurance, that don't okay. have $30,000 in cash laying around to go to really nice, you know, rehabs. Um, that's near and dear to my heart. That There was a point in time in my depths of my addiction where I needed help and wanted help, but I didn't know of any resources. Yeah, where are you going to go? Yeah. yeah. The other one is January 3rd. Sorry, I keep June. June, June. Thank you, June. So June third is the town in the park. June fourth is uh, a recovery concert that's down in St. George in my neck of the woods, aka God's country. <laughs> Don't be mad, Todd. It's just it's just the reality. Hey, I, I, we got the sun. I got to deal baby. with it. I got to deal with it. <laughs> we got the snow. You got the sun. There you go. Uh, that is going to be the Sobriety Foundation. We're raising money for the Sobriety yeah. Foundation, which is an amazing organization. Yeah, I love them. So those are the two events, and we have um, Chaz Smith, a.k.a. Kalichi, and Joe Nestor performing both of those nights out there in St. George at the, it's basically, what do I call it now, Utah Tech University campus. Yeah. So they're always okay. changing it. Very cool. Um, and then I'll put all the links to your stuff um, Please do. In, the, in the show notes so people can just click and go. And I, mm-hmm. and I encourage anyone listening to you right now to reach out to you and, you know, if you can... If you have a question for Jared or if you want to, you know, subscribe to his podcast, if you want to donate to some of these things that he's involved with, uh, please do. Yeah. And, um, yeah, if any way I can help on those things, let me know. I Especially mean that. The, the, thank you. And the education piece, listen, I'm always willing to share my story, Todd. If it helps one person, then fantastic. Yeah. What I'm passionate about today is educating people on the dangers of substance abuse. Yeah. I feel like right now there it's at a point where it's becoming a epidemic pandemic. You know, I, I don't charge anything to go talk at a local high school if I don't have to travel. And if I do, then just pay for, you know, my hotel and yeah. my gas. That's why I say I'm an educational speaker. I do mindfulness stuff. We do the Hershey's kisses, right? Like, like yeah. it's not just me up there talking <laughs> and there's some interaction and, and yeah, I really cool. try to make it very sure therapeutic and educational for, yeah the younger generation coming up. I'm Love pretty that. passionate about that too. Love it. God takes care of me as long as I'm doing the right things, man. Yeah. So I've, I've been pretty fortunate to, to work in, they pay me to do what I do, which is crazy. Yeah. Isn't that so crazy to you? Like, Oh yeah. I pinch myself every day going, I, I get to do this and I get to make a living at it. Yeah. It's, it's weird. It's I used crazy. to have a job and now I just show up to a building and they give me money to do what I love doing. And it's nuts. And so I, you know, I do have a supplement line. That would be nice. We have a pool in the backyard. We'd like to put in someday, but those are luxury dreams. I'm more passionate imagine about it, imagine it. And then it will happen. There you go. I'm Keep imagining more passionate about giving yeah. back the, the fundraising and any sure. education that I could do. That'd be cool. Yeah. 
Yeah, the Sobriety Foundation's amazing. Susan Peterson's the best. Oh, yeah. yeah, I got to speak at their event last year, and it was amazing. Yeah. And so, yeah, God, I would love to um, – I'd love to see if I could be down there those those times. But uh, anyway, wow, dude, you're amazing. Thanks, buddy. You really are. Um, and I, I don't say that lightly. Like, I don't I don't mean amazing. Like I'm. Like you, you don't have stuff to work on. Amazing that you are vulnerable. Amazing that you're accountable. Amazing that you are honest. Thank you. Amazing that you are a, a connector. Amazing that you're one that's not afraid to speak his mind now and, 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 and take take from it what comes with it, you know? It's just beautiful to watch. I mean, it's just the transformation's unbelievable. <laughs> right back I at you, Todd. So Listen, blown. I wouldn't I, I honestly <laughs> don't know that I would be sitting here today if if you hadn't have like if I hadn't gone to an event where you stood up in a room full of people and my jaw hadn't dropped, I don't think that I would be sitting here today. Like you gave me permission and hopefully the more that we can do, give other people permission to just be themselves and not have yeah. to live in shame. Wow. That just blows my mind. Like when you say that, like, you know, you always hope that happens, you know, yeah. and um, one of the most powerful things that you can tell anyone, especially the people that are closest to you, and it's not, I love you. And that's a powerful thing to say. Yeah. But we say that a lot. I love you, love you, love you too. And we get desensitized a little bit to it. The single most powerful thing you can tell someone is, I believe in you. Mm -hmm. And I believe in you, Jared. I really do. And and not that you need to hear that from me because I know you believe in yourself now, which is the beauty of it. Thank you. So I hope you know that. Thank you, man. Yeah. I, I, I know we got these mics in us, but when this is over, I'm going to give you a huge hug, <laughs> bro. I am Absolutely. very, very thankful and Absolutely. very grateful. Um, one last thing. Do you, do you mind reading that out loud? Not a problem. The most delightful surprise in life is to suddenly recognize there is nothing wrong with you. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. I have my clients say that on day one. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm talking to heroin addicts, coke addicts, meth addicts, you name it. They just got yeah. out of prison, and they'll read that on day one. And almost 10 out of 10 times, Jared, they start crying. Yeah, I'm, I, it made me tear up. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and not that we – that doesn't mean we don't have stuff to work on. What it means is to your core, see, that's the greatness. I see you. Yeah, you're, you're – one of the best definitions of depression I've ever heard is pretending to be someone I'm not. And the, the moment you started putting poison in your body, you started to pretend to be someone you're not. You're over here, and that's why you were left empty. But I saw over here from the day I met you. Yeah. You just you just need to start seeing that and getting in line with that, and that's what you're doing now, and it's awesome. Thank you. I know that we're probably over on time, but... A little bit, but that's all right. <laughs> it, it made me think of one thing that I have Please. to share. Okay. There is, I love Disney. There's, a, there's a <laughs> Moana, right? Okay, so Andy I looks shocked right now. <laughs> there is a certain scene <laughs> in Moana where, where the the girl basically looks a, across at this monstrous lava monster, Tafiti. Thank you. And this courageous little girl starts, you know, says, "Let her come to me." Mm -hmm. And this Tafiti, you know, starts roaring, yeah. splitting the ocean and roaring towards her. And that, to me, the, it's such a symbol. I actually play that in family groups because, like, at that lava monster's Tafiti's core, yeah. that's who we really are, right? Yeah. And then once that little girl takes and she puts the, the heart of Tafiti back in, she transforms and she's the beautiful person that she is. Yeah, You know, like that, it really... Anyways, that, that's empower. It, it always makes me emotional because I, I felt like I was to feed you before. Yeah. And I felt like I've been able to, to kind of transform and get back to who I originally was. Yeah. Yeah. Beautifully said. Thanks for sharing that. Thanks, we, we needed to hear that. You can watch that little clip on YouTube. Uh, yeah. Hopefully it'll make sense once you watch it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I told you guys, this is, you're in for a treat today. Jared Miller. What a, what an amazing human being who uh, is proof to all of us that we can overcome and rise and um, move on. You know, there's a, there's a quote by uh, Pablo Picasso that says, the meaning, uh, the purpose in life, I might have this backwards, I, I just butchered this, see? see? Here it's we go. cool, man. I think it's the meaning in life is to find your gift. The purpose in life is to give it away. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's happened to you. I mean, I see that. You have found your gift and now you're giving it away. And I think that's, you know, 
that's why we're here. So, man, we were all just uh, the recipients of this amazing gift of Jared today. We've got his beautiful wife, Mandy, here supporting us. Thanks for being here, Mandy. really means a lot. Um, I think the world of you. Um, <clears throat> anything I can do to help support your cause even more, I'm happy to do so. So please know that. Thank um, you. you know, we're, we're allies in this together. And guys, if you have a family member that's in that darkness, you know, Jared gave us some great advice. If you are struggle with n not knowing what to say, share a link to this episode. Say, listen to this and then follow back up with them because it will open up their eyes a little bit. It'll make them feel like, wow, okay, if, if Jared can do this, so can I. And you can talk to him. It'll open up a conversation. So please share this episode with anyone and everyone you know that needs help on, on any level. It doesn't even have to be addiction. Uh, we can, Anyone can gain from this. So please do so. Again, thanks to my sponsors. I love you guys for believing me. That means the world. And one last thank you to Jared. I um, appreciate you taking some time with us today and sharing some thoughts and, uh, and your gift with us. Thank you, Todd. If I would have known the day I met you that one day I'd be sitting here doing a podcast <laughs> with you, it's mind-blowing. So I am extremely grateful from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. You are so welcome, my friend. All right, everyone. Till next time, I love you guys. Take care. <laughs>